Okay, it's Roger once again, and we are going to go to Siberia and look at this ancient 40,000-year-old horse they found in the Siberian permafrost. Now, he's going to talk about this being totally unique to have something so well preserved. I agree that it's unique that the wool and the fur and all that stuff is, is still wool and fur, yeah. Well, the uniqueness of ancient creatures being being preserved is not not unique at all they're, they're virtually everywhere uh, it's just that most of them have actually turned to stone and they turn to stone because they become invaded by minerals and salts and so forth that change the the soft tissue into stone literally into stone and it's all it is is a, it's what's called nucleophilic substitution and it happens as things can invade and work through the body now this was star, stored in a frozen condition where nothing could work through it so it, it just kept everything the way it was now I was the one that discovered and named mud fossils mud fossils because they're preserved in mud now what happens in the mud waters are able to sort of migrate through and invade. However, they stabilize them around membranes. This, this is a, a lung coated with a membrane. This was coated with a membrane. It's gone. This membrane is no longer on there. We're down into the alveoli, these little holes. You see these holes here? You see all those little holes? Those are these holes right here, these little alveoli. And then inside each one of those alveoli is filled with blood and oxygen and so forth. And the blood collected in here and literally leaked out of this lung. And here's what it leaked. <laughs> that's, it. that's blood. You can't tell that's blood and you've got a problem. Now this one was so perfect that what I did was I drilled up inside into this real red area. It's just literally totally blood came out of there. And I had a DNA test and it's human. And the thing that scares me is they're going to clone that horse and, and, you know, there's so many things on this earth that still have DNA in them that it scares the hell out of me. i got to be perfectly honest with you. Now, this is the DNA test from the, one of those lungs that I just showed you. There was a lung and then two other giant human beings, and they were all tested as human mitochondrial DNA, and they successfully extracted the DNA. I took the samples and sent them to the lab, so they didn't extract them from the actual rocks. I did, but when I sent them the stuff, he said it was dense, and it was 100% um, human identical to modern mitochondrial DNA and these are from ancient giant human creatures giants so the mother's side is the same now I didn't go any further than that but a excellent quality DNA was obtained and these are what they came out to be homo sapiens and this is all they did all of this I mean this is deep 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 stuff this is not your just average swab and say have a nice day we actually I, well I did I drilled into these specimens into the arterial area and I can tell where the arteries were it's very very simple and I extracted literally red powdery blood and that's what I sent to the lab and they they did it and they um, they certified it and they said yes absolutely and they stick behind it I talked to the lab director, and he said, absolutely, we stick behind it. However, it, I, he wanted to me, me to make it absolutely certain that you understood. I extracted the particles. So if I just swabbed something, well, then, then obviously it would be an idiot that I would be. I drilled in. After, after cleaning them absolutely flawlessly, then, I, of course, I wear the mask, you know, all that stuff. And then I drilled in you know, gloves and all that stuff. I drilled in and extracted these raw samples of, of literally raw blood, just like they're doing with that horse, only it wasn't really liquid at this point. It was, it was powdery. I told you I had a lung. Well, this is a human hand, and it was human, and it is a left human hand. That is the tendon sticking right down from the bumper pad that you have around here. The thumb came off this way. I have knuckles, I have fingers, I have th the thumb. I have all kinds of things from this giant hand. 
and I, the rest of them's got to be very close because <laughs> the hand was attached to the arm, which is attached to the body, which is attached to the leg, attached to the head. <laughs> so he's down there somewhere. Now, this was extracted because I had a, a, an addition put onto my house, and when they dug up the little spot where we're going to put on the addition, this came out. All kinds of stuff came out of there. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And and then I started looking at it everywhere I looked. They were everywhere, just literally everywhere. And then, of course, I had the DNA done. This was seven years ago. And... Um, Nobody will pay attention to this because it upends everything they've been saying. And where do you see the stuff that that they they just refuse to engage to talk about? It's it's a really disgraceful. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole video, but it's scientists discovered forty thousand year old horse in Siberia perm permafrost, and I'll put a link to it. And this is the Daily Mail, and this is the the skin, literally the skin and the fur that was on this horse. And then they're getting down into the, the biology, the tissue. Now, the stuff that I have is exactly the same, only it turned into stone. It did not stay in its biological form. It, it, it was nucleophilically substituted because it wasn't solidly impacted. This is just like you put a plastic bag around it and, and put it in the freezer for thousands of years and then thought it out. It's exactly the same thing you'd have because it cannot be invaded. The whole key is if the stuff can get invaded into there and you can have minerals and metals and all that stuff flow through sort of fluidity, they're going to find other products to stabilize with and they'll cause a stable product at the end and it will be just like this only it will be stone and that's what I have. And that's how these bones formed. That's a bone. Now in this, you would see it as literally a bone. You'd clear this off and you'd see the white calcium bone under. This has turned into, into stone because it's nucleophilically substituted. There is that one little spot right there. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's a bone. That's the last bone in this whole bone. And that's what happens. They get substituted. It's just like my goose here, Caesar. Same thing. It's a goose. There's his feathers, and it's it's the same process as this. Only if he had been in a in in a frozen condition, you'd still now the feathers would start peeling off of here instead of being invaded and turned into stone. And the reason these all turned into stone is they were in a flood. That's why this is flat on this side. He was in a flood like that. And the same thing with the hold on. Same thing with the with the uh, lung. These all happened in the flood. It's just the great flood they talk about in the ancient texts, in the Bible, and everywhere else. That's flat as a pancake. Boom. Hardened up in in in, in salt waters and so forth, and long duration floods, they become invaded, and the the membrane, which is uh, it's called fascia, or in the lung it's called pleura. And other places it's called um, synovial sheathing. But it's, it's a, like, almost like a plastic bag that coats all of it. Everything, every different type of tissue in your body has to be separated from every other type of tissue. It's just, and it's your, your skin keeps you from getting invaded by the air and the water and everything else that you, you come in contact with. Everything is a membrane that separates you from everything else. Even feathers. Even feathers are literally a membrane to keep you separated. I'm going to show you some other stuff. And when you see the stuff that my friend Tyson has out on the West Coast, it's going to blow your mind. The, it's time for this to take on a complete academic interrogation. No more of this nonsense of being afraid to tell the truth. Time to come out, come out of the closet, academia. Okay, my friends, this is Tyson's channel. Absolutely fabulous. Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. And um, Tyson and I have been going back and forth for, for several years now. What, how this all started was um, Scott Wiles was up here in Oregon, and he sent me a picture of something on the coast that was just amazing. It was a, a tendon emplacement. And I said, wow, this is crazy. And I did a video on it. And Tyson lives right in that area. So he gets a hold of me. He said, wow, I, I'm very interested. And he was, he's, he's a fabulous guy, really nice guy. And very, very intelligent. Understands this stuff very well. And 
not only surface wise like wow look at what it looks like he's he knows to go for the geological explanations and he counters them with saying how did this get here why did that how did this geological formation create this and they have no excuse whatsoever somebody painted it somebody came up and stuck things in here they the absolute nonsense that they they can't confront Tyson and they can't confront me because we have the evidence and they have no evidence to support their their I mean, it's, it's actually nonsense at this point. And, and for them not to pay attention to it, this is a disgrace to science, absolutely disgraceful. Now, I'm going to go through this and explain to you what this is. This is all biology. And not only is it here on Earth, I'm going to show you these virtual same things that are not on Earth. Guess where they are? Now, let a geologist explain this. What, what the hell is going on here? What, why is this all green growing here and it's black here? And these like reddish looking things and these balls with all these little taffany spots in them they call it and what is all this erosion of very very fine particles coming down here well, what that what's that all about <laughs> have them explain these things they can't all right you see this here these are those stubs sticking up and these are these straps and what can i show you biologically these kind of stubs and straps and balls which are, are everywhere you see them the balls and the straps and this eroded stuff coming out of them why is this black running down here from each one of them what the hell is that all about have a, a geologist explain that okay remember what you're seeing here is all these straps and these things and these balls all over the place well let's see if we can find somewhere else they exist all right, this is exactly the same thing as what I showed you where Tyson is. Only this one still has the red blood in it. It's, it's, it's not washed into that whitish looking stuff like he has. Above is the, this is called a mucosa. This is called the interstitium. These balls are all in here and they are the anchors. And here's what it looks like in the biology. All right, here's what it is. That's, that's the biological formation. These are the straps. These are the balls. That's the mucosa, the layer of, of um, membrane, really. This is all membrane. And what we were seeing is these straps. Now, they, they're showing them just randomly, or, but they are organized. And I'll show you there that they are organized. All right, here's exactly, exactly what Tyson has. You see those things that were all in a row and they were broken off? and the balls and the straps were laying all over. That's exactly what it is. That ball should not be pulled out of that tissue. This is an injury. These straps are those little squiggly looking things that were laying all over the place. These balls are laying all over the place. They go through the tendons in what they call a Chinese finger trap. So the tendon can move and the balls are locked in. These are anchors. That's what they are as anchors. These are straps that allow things to flex and move and still be anchored. That's what interstitium is. And this is exactly what Tyson had, and that's exactly what interstitium looks like. Okay, there is a variety of different attachments. They call them enthesis, and that is a tendon enthesis ball, which straps to a tendon. The tendon can slide back and forth, attached to the muscle to pull your arms and so forth. These are exactly what Tyson had. This is exactly what Tyson had. And then the straps, you can see them laying all over, and the balls laying all over. That was supposed to be locked into tissue, which you can see them in Tyson's stuff. They are locked into tissue, and some of them are rolling down and so forth. And I think I've shown you other places where they're just, they're just laying all over. And, and, but that's a different type of anchor than this. These are, let me show you the anatomical. But this is, the, this is exactly what Tyson had. They're all in a row running down, and all the straps and the balls are anchored up above. And as, as it washed in, these little stubs just laid here, and all of this stuff washed down, and then the balls are stuck in the wall still, and some of them have dropped down. Okay, like I say, there's all kinds of different tissue um, types and tendon emplacements, and this is the type like um, Tyson had which has the balls and the straps and the anchor. This is not really a good representation. And they don't really understand this. They just discovered interstitium a couple of years ago. I'm not kidding you. And a lot of it was because of my research. <laughs> I have been looking at this interstitium for 10 years trying to understand it. And I did get a hold of the top people in the world that were the only ones doing fascia. It was like two people in the world 
back when I started 10 years ago. Now it's a big, huge thing, and it's a new organ system. And, and they still don't understand it. As I showed you, well, let me hold on. All right, so don't forget, this is Tyson's creature. He's got, he's got fabulous research. These are those straps. They broke off, and they, they had run up across here, these little straps, and then and they attached into the, just like the other, it's, it's identical. There's no difference whatsoever. And it's a little bigger, but that's about it. <laughs> See this? 12 most mysterious things scientists still can't explain. All of these little mossy coated balls all over. Look at them, they're everywhere. I mean everywhere. <laughs> Look at them up here. That's because this was the skin of some gigantic creature. I'm telling you, the Nag Hammadi texts. Look up the Nag Hammadi texts. Uh, Gospel of Thomas. And look up number, uh, this is it right here, Nag Hammadi Library. Just found these texts. And look up 56 and 80. And Jesus, these are supposed to be the secret sayings of Jesus. He says that the earth is a body and a carcass. Well, I'm not arguing. <laughs> these things here grow the moss because they're bio biological full of, of bloody biological edible material. That's why these love it. Mosses love red blood. Now, same thing here. <laughs> this, that's all some kind of plant growth going on here, some kind of you know, algae or whatever it is. It's eating whatever is in these, these balls, and those balls eroded out of this bloody wall of flesh. That was the interstitium. And this is what happens to the, the gooey part in the middle. It turns into mud. That's why you get all these red... Where you have red clay muds, that's where a flesh has eroded. That's, that's, and it's, there's different places that erode differently. Then you have tendons. Watch, so here's a tendon. And when I'm talking about giants, you could see that's a pretty good-sized creature if these are the tendon balls. In us, you need a microscope to see those. And I don't even know if you can see them all that well. Now, these are what they call the moky marbles, the same things, tendon balls. That's the mud when they erode. And I believe below this is the basement layer. So you have this, the skin, let's say, at the top. Then you have a real floppy layer so that you can gush around and get back to where you're supposed to be because those balls are anchored. That's what the interstitium is. They're anchors. So you can gush this way, gush this way, push this way, pull this way, and then when you relax, everything comes back to where it's supposed to be straps and balls. Well, it's er eroded between the skin and the basement layer where you start to get into your flesh. And that is part of this creature right there. I mean, these things were just absolutely enormous. The earth is a carcass and a body. Okay, these are what they call blueberries. And uh, this is the basement layer, exactly like the Moki marbles I showed you. All right, creatures had tendons, too. And what do tendons look like? They're very strappy, primarily consists of calcium carbonates, limestone, once they uh, become nucleophilically invaded. Now, and then they come down and they form these little hexagons, hexagon, hex all the way down to the very tip. And guess what this is? That's a tendon. <laughs> That's a tendon. Now, it's come up and it's broken off. This is what's called the abrupt transition. I know about the abrupt transition extremely well. And th there's an abrupt transition. Well, here's all. I got a couple laying around here. Hold on, let me find them. All right, you see this? <laughs> this is a moon. You see that? That's a tendon ball. This is where the abrupt transition is. These are, they have all these little squiggly looking things just exactly like that. These are anchors. That holds it into the biological mass that it's attached to. They break right off here, but they leave a stalk place just like this. Same as I have here. This is a tendon ball. Now inside the tendon ball, some of them have a core like this one does. Some of them have actually crosshatch looking thing inside of them. But they all have this abrupt transition right at the tip where the fiber comes out to attach because they are all attachments. They're anchors. And somehow they got into being moons. I mean, I, I, I cannot explain this, but every single moon you find, 100% have those. All right, check this out. 
this is again the tendon ball with the anchor and uh, this is a moon <laughs> now that is my belt and what are we going to do with my belt we're going to look at that up in the mic in the um, up here i got to turn the lights off or you will not see anything hold on stay with me okay this is my belt which is nothing more than skin it's the it's cowhide now all of these little black spots are those black balls and what they did they when they tan something they crush it and roll it and smash it and smush it and put all kind of chemicals in it to stabilize it in that flat form and then it's flexible and, it, and because of the straps and nobody probably understands that unless you look at this this is where my belt buckle my you see the straps every one of those straps goes to one of those black balls. You see there all the black balls have a strap attached to them. Well where they punch the hole through so you can put your little you know, I don't know what they call it, the tongue <laughs> through there to, to your belt buckle. They every one of them has one of these straps. So that strap is that strap. Alright you saw Tyson's straps and balls and all that stuff well guess what this is nothing more than skin this is pinched together skin here and here this is stretched skin the balls and straps are attached right here <laughs> exactly like what ten, uh, Tyson's stuff was showing only his was all eroded away this is on a surface and literally sandblasted and you say, oh, Roger, how could it be sandblasted? And I say, well, I could tell you if I told you where this was, you would understand. Now, this is interstitching and on a grand scale. This is a feature that is an artery with all its little blood vessels supplying blood to these muscle sarcomeres. That is the vein which brings the blood back up to the heart this is the blood that's squirting down to supply all of these blood blood to all of these sarcomeres these are sarcomeres you see these little squares those are sarcomeres that is eroded bloody fleshy tissue from these connective tissues muscles have little tiny bits of connective tissue and then in between them they have all of this red bloody stuff that pulls the connective tissue two pieces together literally like that and this is where that crab is right there they called it a crab well it's not a crab okay I hope by now you realize the things I've been talking about some of them are on Mars and some of them are here on earth just like the Mars blueberries they're the same as the Moki Marbles. The Mars Crab, which is nothing more than an artery and a vein, and there are many on Earth. And the Mars Morris Code, which is nothing more than interstitching, huge interstitching, sandblasted because there is no water on Mars to speak of that, that would puddle this up and it sort of dusts it off down to a point where it's almost like sandy underneath here it would be muddy underneath and you'd see that just floppy stuff like Tyson had that's the difference but they still have the straps and the balls all over same exact same thing and that's the Mars Morris coat now this was all taken by curiosity and I followed that very carefully and I did all of these uh, videos back in uh, oh, 2015, 2016 right around there when because 2015 was the mission I believe it was 2014, 2015 right in that area and I, like I say I, by that time I was deep into this and this <laughs> just blew me away and nobody wanted to talk they called me a crazy person and I, I mean I was really ostracized by that time anyway so I think things are coming around Tyson and, and myself and there's a bunch of people that are looking into this you know I have a lot of I, I mean I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a, an authoritative source on this now I'm, I'm not bragging it's just true I have done all the chemistry I've done all the CAT scans and DNA and I have samples coming out of my ears specimens unbelievable I have contacts all over the world and, um, and Tyson's one of the best. So, 
I think it's time to put a little more attention into reality. 